for eight. Yes. Introducing our regional champions, the Yukon Huskies, all region team members, Kristen Williams, AZ Fudd, and our most outstanding player, Paige Beckers. We will start off, Coach, with an opening statement from you before opening up to questions just for the players. Coach? Uh, I, you know, if you watch the game, there's really not much uh, that you can say to add to it. It was pretty remarkable. Um, it's it's one of the best. It's one of the best games I've ever been a part of um, since I've been at UConn. Uh, regular season, postseason, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it was it was just it was just amazing the way you know the ten kids that are on the court are playing for their lives. You know, nobody wants to lose. And everybody's making big play after big play, and nobody backed down from the moment. It was just it's a shame one of <coughs> one of us had to lose, right? It'd be great if uh, both of us could go, but um, I mean, if if there's two teams out there better than this one, <laughs> holy moly! <laughs> and they're probably. say just really proud of these guys they don't make it easy but they make it worth it <laughs> thank you coach at this time we'll open it up for questions for our student athletes again just please raise your hand we'll bring you over a microphone please identify yourself and your affiliate we'll start up front with Doug uh, Doug Feinberg the AP Paige you said the other yesterday how you're a Love watching basketball, huge fan of basketball. You've played a bunch of games. Where does this rank, and what was it like emotionally to play in this game that had so many swings back and forth? I would have loved to watch that game. I don't know. <laughs> that one. I think being in it was obviously crazy. I think last year, the Elite Eight game against Baylor, like I didn't think we could top that and how crazy the game was, but I think that might have topped it for sure. Um, but it was just a lot of fun to play in. Uh, two very competitive teams, like Coach said, just playing for our lives at that point. And we found a way to win, and we stuck together, and we stayed composed. And, yeah, I'm just – it was a really exciting game for sure. Save the left, Tom. Yeah. Uh, Paige, uh, you've been kind of trying for a few weeks since you came back to kind of find yourself or find what you were. Uh, before the injury, why was tonight the night? Why was overtime the moment that you were able to kind of shake off the rust all and, and be yourself again? Uh, just me trying to stay confident in myself. I know that there's going to be ups and downs through the process. There's going to be highs and lows. It's not always going to be easy. There's going to be hard times. But <coughs> just staying confident in myself and trusting myself that I'm going to get it back and also, just my teammates and my coaches just instilling that confidence in me that they trust me with these in these moments and they trust me with the ball and they trust me to do the right thing. And I just wanted to continue to play. And coach is always huge on me about just make sh making sure just to find a way to win. And so I think that was the key tonight. Take the middle. Hi, all. Uh, Jackie Powell with Bleacher Report. If I could ask this question to all three of you, if that's okay. Um, if you could take me through how you were able to regroup once Dorka went down and what the emotion was like when you could see her at the end and, and, and embrace her with the confetti all around. Kristen, let's start with you. Um, obviously, it's always hard to see a teammate go down like that, um, especially in the middle of the game. Um, but, you know, Coach got us together and basically just told us the biggest thing we could do for her is win the game and win it for her. Uh, so I guess that was just our mentality for the rest of the game. Um, and it was so good to see her after the game. Um, she had a sling on, so that was really unfortunate. But uh, we, we just embraced her and, you know, told her that we have her back no matter what. Um, and we were just really excited that we could get this win for her. AZ? 
I think she said it great. <laughs> Paige, anything to add? I got it. <coughs> I like it. Come over to the left. Lori Riley from the Hartford Current. It, for any of the players, it seemed like you guys had a different energy in the overtimes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Easy, you want to start? Um, I think just the first overtime, we we did a great job of just keeping our composure and staying together. Um, and that second overtime, you could tell the way the way Paige started 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 us off. Um, that really, I think that really just uh kind of like started oh my gosh the way Paige started <laughs> us off um I don't know someone else take this I can't speak right now <laughs> what <laughs> I just go cast out Christian Jeez, what else you need? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big win that's a good answer <coughs> take it back to the left here uh Paige Chip Scoggins with the Minneapolis Star Tribune what are your emotions now getting to go home and play on this big stage and how often did you think about this possibility throughout the season um, I, for me, I take it one game at a time. Our whole team takes it one game at a time. We're not looking into the future. Um, we're just being where our feet are and staying in the present. Um, I mean, it's obviously, obviously extra motivation just to go back home and have the Final Four there and be a part of that experience. Um, but I, honestly, wherever the location, what, what gym, what court, I'm just excited to be out there with my sisters and play another game. But, I mean, being at home is nice, too, so I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Middle of Alexa. Alexa Filthy from ESPN. Paige, uh, two questions for you. Where does your mind go in those moments where you're taking over a game in a stage like this in overtime? Are you, what do you kind of feel? What are you thinking? Are you thinking? Are you just kind of reacting? Um, second question is, what do you think, if you could think back to maybe right after your surgery and there was so much uncertainty about, you know, coming back and you knew you had a hard road ahead of you, what do you think you, would have felt if you knew that you'd be able to do this on this stage, you know, three months, four months later? Uh, during a game, um, especially during crunch time and close games like that, I just try to stay composed, um, try to keep keep being that leader for my team and just play with poise and play with calmness. Um, it's easy to get flustered and sort of take let your mind take over and, like I said, just get flustered when they're in close games like that. There's a lot going on. Um, and then just finding a way to win. I mean, that's the main goal of basketball, and I want to win every game I play in. So whatever it takes to keep playing with this team, to keep playing with the coaching staff that we have, um, that's what I want to do. And post-surgery, I just love the game so much, so I was going to do whatever it took, um, spend however much time with the training staff, with my doctors, and, and Hootie just to make sure I could get back. But you never know what the future holds. Like I said, I try to stay where my feet are, just stay in the present and live in the moment. But I don't know. I don't know. I can't dream a lot of the stuff that happens to me, um, which is why I thank God so much because just with huge faith, the things I've done in my life, I'm just super happy to be here. Keep it in the middle. Uh, Russ Steinberg from Boardroom. A question for Kristen and easy uh when you're watching what what page is doing in, in the overtimes what's what's going through your mind as you see that and does that sort of put you at at ease knowing that you know even though nc state's coming down making big shot after big shot that that you still have page there who, who's taking over the game chris why you start literally i was thinking we have page beckers and they don't <laughs> I mean, like, once she make one, the rim is, like, this big. She's just going to keep making them. So, you're just giving her the ball. Um, but, yeah, she does that every day in practice. So, not really surprising. Um, yeah. <laughs> Easy, anything to add? Um, I mean, that whole game, she was amazing. But I think NC State hitting that big shot to put us into that second overtime on her was – <laughs> like the best thing they could do, but the worst thing they could do. <laughs> I'll take it over to the far right. Carl Adamac, Journal Inquirer. Kristen, two-part question, if you don't mind. Uh, first, can you talk about Mika Mule's contributions in her eight minutes on playing time? And second part is, I think you were had the COVID protocol out in Oregon, and you're watching your team get crunched pretty good that day. Can you talk about your journey personally and this team's journey from that point to where you are now? 
Uh, first, Nika, um, contribution to this game was huge. Um, I think we were down by six, and she came in and got a, a big stop. Um, and I ran in transition, and she assisted me the ball. Um, so that was, like, a huge stop for us. Um, and then my journey from when I got COVID, you said? Yeah, when, when you got beaten so soundly out in Oregon, and it looked like, you know, a lot of people thought you guys were dead in the water at that point, and just to come Jeez. back and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think anyone was thinking you were a Final Four team at that point. You know, people think a lot of things. Um, <laughs> you know, it was a very unfortunate situation that, again, happened to our team. Uh, it was very hard to watch, um, just me being not able to play um, and be out there with my teammates that game. But we obviously learned a lot from that game, and we put it in the past and just continued to work hard for the rest of the season and the rest of our games, and here we are. Come up front to Pat. Pat Eden Rob with the Associated Press. Kristen, um, Dorka goes down today, but all season long, you uh, you just talked about you, you've had everybody go down at some point. So how much did that resiliency, can you just talk about the resiliency of this team and how much – that impacted this game, especially after Dorka went down? It impacted the, this game a lot. Um, it's very sad for Dorka, but I feel like the way that our season has gone all, all year, we were well prepared for this game and for something like that to happen. Like you said, you know, a lot of us have gone down at one point or another in the, in the season, so we've kind of learned how to, you know, sub in and just keep rolling with the punches. Um, so that's exactly what happened today. Um, and, and, and yeah, we always find a way to, to get it done. Our last few questions. Hi, Jeff Magliacetti with Huskies Report. This question is for Kristen. A uh, coach earlier this week challenged the senior class to be the difference makers in the Elite Eight, to be the reason your college basketball careers are extending. So how did it feel to prove him, to, to be that reason today and as a second part, how confident are you and how reassuring is it that you're leaving the hands of the program in the hands of the two people next to you? Uh, well, I am not the reason. I'm not the only reason. Like, it was a total team effort, just first and foremost. Um, and I am very comfortable with leaving the program with these two. <laughs> um, you know, they, they're they young still, and they just have so much confidence. So I have a lot of confidence in them. Um, for the rest of their years here. Um, I'm really proud that I've gotten, gotten a chance to, you know, play with them um, this year and last year. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm very um, confident in them. They'll handle business. <laughs> Take it to the back here. Even Noni from Hearst Connecticut Media for AZ. Um, this was the first double overtime game in the Elite Eight in the women's history, uh, women's tournament history. For you, that being, for that being your first Elite Eight, what was, what was it like playing in that environment? Um, this environment was incredible. I mean, every it was like every time we scored and even Nika's big steal, all those moments, the crowd went crazy and that feeling is just amazing. Um, but I think, oh my God. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, I think we kind of just took it quarter by quarter and the overtime, each overtime, um, just staying composed and trusting each other and kind of like Kristen was saying Dorka went down and we knew that we were built for this moment we went through everything this season to be prepared for this and I think that's what we did we just stayed together and held our composure last question on the right um <coughs> Azar from MV, MV Magazine this is question is for you Kristen um and clearly the motivation is to always win and keep going it's your senior year um but it did seem like you were about to, it, it, there was a possibility that you could be beat. Um, and you've, even with the success, you've also been, also come up short in, in, I mean, in the Final Four. So how much is that, you being on those ends of those games and going through what you go through tonight, because you made a clutch shot, clearly, in, in the last few seconds. How much does that play a part, that, that pain from coming up short in the Final Four and then it's the Sweet 16, you're, you're kind of in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it plays a huge part. Um, all of that experience plays a huge part uh, because you 
you know that feeling of the loss and I've unfortunately had it twice my freshman and last year my freshman year and last year and you know that's just a feeling that I don't want to experience again um, so I'm gonna try to do my best to work work my hardest and bring my best effort for every game and for my teammates and I just don't want to feel that feeling again so that's my biggest motivation right now well, ladies, thank you so much. Congratulations, our Bridgeport Regional Champions, and best of luck next Friday in the Final Four. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Now that we've got our logistics ironed out, <laughs> your Elite Eight champion coach, Gino Ariema, we're gonna open it up for questions. We'll start up front with Doug in our microphone. Gino, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Um, I think you guys were 0-5 in overtime games in the NCAA tournament until tonight. So what does it mean to get that monkey off your back, so to speak? And what was it like to coach tonight? I mean, this was, uh, as you said, one of the best games you've ever been involved with in your history at UConn, which obviously has had a lot of really, really good games. What was it like to coach in tonight's game? Um, I, I don't remember all those overtime. I remember the one in Charlotte that was in the Final Four. So I'll take your word for it that there was four other ones. Um, Most people are kind enough not to bring those up. <laughs> Listen, I go into every NCAA tournament game thinking 15 ways that we can win that game and 15 ways that I think we can lose that game. And anytime, you know, something happens in a game, I'm never surprised. Um, it. You know, the team we played today never thought they were gonna never thought they were gonna lose. I mean, I, I was just reading that we had the lead for like thirty nine minutes and they played like they were winning the whole game. And the other night against Notre Dame, they thought they were winning the whole game. And the only time they led maybe was like the the last minute. So we played a team that you knew no matter what was going on, this game was not gonna end until they they decided they, you know, that they had enough chances to win. It was just an incredible feeling to coach the team and to watch us make the plays that we made and watch them make the plays that they made. And um, it, it was it was a kind of it's kind of basketball game that makes you appreciate how great this game can be, you know and. Uh, it was a great showcase for our sport, you know. Um, I don't think there could be better advertising for what women's basketball can be than, you know, what you saw tonight. Take the left. Jonas Pope, Raleigh News and Observer. Um, yesterday you talked about some years ago Wes came up and what he was doing at Chatt uh, Chattanooga. Then if you've played them head to head, did you talk to him after the game and say anything about his program and, and, and how well they they played and, and where they are now compared to where they were years ago? Now, <clears throat> you know, I, I think Wes probably had a chance to coach at a lot of other places when he was at Chattanooga, you know. But I think he always had his heart set on going back to state, you know, having been an assistant there. Uh, and I knew that when he got that opportunity that he would – you know, he would do exactly what he did, you know, uh, at UT Chattanooga. And it's, uh, I think it's a testament to him, his staff, his players, um, that, uh, you know, the ACC 
for the longest time, um, you know, didn't belong to NC State. You know, everyone else always assumed that it was going to be Notre Dame or Louisville or, you know, <clears throat> Duke for the longest time, you know. And I think Wes went in there and changed, changed all that, and he did it in a fairly um, rapid fashion, and he did it the right way with a great group of kids. They play hard. He takes advantage of all the mistakes that you make. He knows exactly what shot he wants it, his team to get. Um, he's humble, and his players, you know, reflect that. And I'm glad we have a series with them coming up. Um, he wanted this one to count as the first one at home. And uh, unfortunately, I told him I would like to do that, but we can't. So <laughs> you have to play us on, on campus. But I remember the first time we ever played NC State, I was an assistant coach at St. Joe's, like 1976, 77, I forget, something like that. I don't know. And I remember thinking, wow, these guys are unbelievable. You know, Reynolds Coliseum was one of the, like, the great arenas I've ever been in in my life. I haven't been down there in a while. I'm looking forward to going down there. Take it to the middle here. Alexa Filter from ESPN. Gino, was maybe even yesterday, two days ago, you were saying Paige isn't yet 100%. She isn't mm -hmm. where she was last year, but that's okay. Today, it looked like not only that she was like that old player, but that maybe she had the best game of her career on the biggest stage. And so what impressed you or surprised you the most about what she was able to do tonight, given where she was even five weeks ago? Um, yeah, I think Kristen, Kristen probably said it right, that um, Paige does it routinely in practice every day. And so the players have come to expect that she would do what she did tonight. Um, and she did it so often last year. Um, but she is still a human. She is still a kid. And she still did miss two months of basketball. And not just the game. She missed two months of practice. So it was going to take time. And who knew? You know, I, I had no expectation of when, when this would come, this kind of moment that she had. But, um, you know, Paige is different. You know, uh, those players, if they were commonplace, we would know exactly who they are and we'd be able to rattle them off, but they're not. They're, they're few and far in between. And um, she was made for these moments. Take it to the left here. Jared, this is kind of the same question, I guess, but uh, you had said that you didn't think she would be back mm -hmm. this year. You didn't have, you weren't holding out much hope of that. When you saw her turn it on at overtime, I mean, what went through your mind? Did you kind of have that holy cow, she's back kind of moment? <clears throat> yeah, there was a point in time during the season where I really said to the team, I said, I don't know if you guys are all, you know, walking around and practice every day going, that's okay, it doesn't matter how bad we are, Paige is coming back and, you know, she'll, she'll fix everything. I said, I I'm not counting on it. You know, a, a lot, a lot can happen when somebody has surgery and they miss two months, and 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 especially when, you know, she's the kind of player that her mobility, you know, she's shifty, you know, she's not, uh, you know, she's not a normal play straight line basketball, you know, so she needs that mobility, and and I knew she wouldn't have it for a while. Um, and I knew that her emotions would get the best of her because she's impatient and she would she would rush it. And I've seen it happen before. You rush the rehab and now you're set back another month. So I worried about all these things. But when it was evident that uh, that there was a chance, you know, by that time, a lot of other players on our team had gotten a lot better. And I think if Paige had come back to the exact same team, we probably wouldn't be in this game, given what happened. But 
know. A lot of kids had an, a lot of opportunities this year to prove that they belong at UConn, and they, they took advantage of it, and they proved it, and all they needed was, you know, Paige to add the finishing touches. Take it to the middle here. Hey, Gino. Uh, Jackie Powell with Bleacher Report. I just wanted to build off of um, Alexa's question. In During the WNBA postseason uh, this past year, Diana Taurasi took the Phoenix Mercury to beat the Vegas Aces in Game 5. She wasn't 100%, but she made clutch shots and changed the ways that uh, defenses played them. Uh, I'm curious what parallels you might draw between that situation and what you experienced tonight. Um, there's a lot of that. There's there's a, there's a lot of that. I don't I don't like to compare. You know, players from different eras. I think that's usually um, a dangerous thing because it does a little bit of disservice to both kids. Diana was Diana, and there'll never be another one like her. Um, and I. I've never seen anybody play with the amount of injuries that Diana's played with and play with the kind of resolve and the kind of toughness and the kind of competitiveness that that she plays with. Uh, so I've seen it for 20-some years now. Um, so what she did last year in the playoffs didn't really surprise me. Paige doesn't have a history yet of having been through all that um, but she has those qualities. She has the qualities of a of a kid who loves the game, like Diana does, who lives to be in the gym, um, who loves to compete more than anything else, uh, wants to compete at everything, wants to compete every day, and um, and, and she thinks there's never been a better basketball player than her, even though she's humble enough to admit that, you know, she makes mistakes. Um, and Dee was, you know, the quick to tell you that there's nobody better than her that's ever played. Um, and they're both right. And I'm the luckiest coach in the world because I had a chance to, to be around both of them and to see it firsthand. I've seen Dee do what Paige did tonight. I saw it at home. Uh, we were playing uh, TCU, and um, we were down at halftime, and Dee had 31 in the game and just took over the, the entire second half and made sure we won. I said, I said going into t tonight, I, 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 think, I think I told you guys, somebody's going to come up big tonight. Our program's not going to win this game. Programs don't win this game. Programs can get you to this game. But somebody needs to be big, like really big, to get you to the next two games. And somebody said, who's that going to be? I said, I have no idea. If you'd asked me last year, I would have told you who it's going to be. But I still you know, wasn't ready to put that kind of pressure on, on Paige. But without a performance like that, there is no next weekend. No matter how good the rest of your team is, it doesn't matter. And next weekend's the same thing, you know. There's four teams out there, but there's three or four kids that they're going to decide who wins the national championship. Take it to the second row. Howard Mendel, the Nats. You know, good to chat with you and congratulations. Two parts to this, if I could. Uh, you know, one is like you talked about, programs don't win games per se, but this program has won this game mm -hmm. in the season every year going back since 2008. And so I, you know, as a student of the game, two parts of that, one being, you know, that's a number that's gonna live on for a long time, however long that streak goes, the way, you know, Wooden's 10 and 12 does, the way the Yankees run from 49 to 64 does. I just wonder what that means to you, it, you know, when you think about it relative to sports history. And then the other part is, to have Paige have a game like this, where she comes out and wins a game, she's a link in that chain what do you think that does for her going forward? I, I, <clears throat> I try to use the success that we've had in the past 
not as a um, like a this is the standard and you need to live up to it. Again, I, I, that's grossly unfair to be able to to, to do that to anybody. Um, but what I have done, including with this team, is tell them that this is what we have done. So going into this game, I was pretty honest with them. I said, this is what we usually do in a game like this at this time of the year. Okay? And here's why we do it. Here's why we're able to do it. And if you all didn't have those same qualities in you, we wouldn't be in this game. So when you're playing in this game, it's not just another group of kids playing in this game. It's a game that everybody who's watching us play goes, uh, that's Connecticut playing. So you didn't create that, but that's what follows you around. And you're supposed to use that as a as an added incentive or as an added, you know, boost to where you're going as opposed to a, a yoke that you're dragging, you know, the tradition that you're dragging, the having to live up to it. It's not easy. It's not easy being these kids with the pressures that they're under. So I want them to use it as, as a positive, you know. Having said that, you know, I didn't expect to. I didn't expect to be in this situation when I when I uh, when I started coaching. Although I did say to a kid recently, I asked her how old she was, and she said she was 16. You know, she was like a high school junior or something. And um, I said, look, I can't promise you anything. I said, but we have a pretty good shot at going to the Final Four every year. I said, you know, when was the last time? You, you know, the last time we were weren't in the Final Four, you were three. And I, f I started laughing when I said it because it was so, <laughs> it was incredulous to me. And, um, um, and it could end tomorrow, it could end next week, it could end next year, like everything else ends. But kids like Paige won't let it end. And there has to be, you know, that kind of kid. Listen, when you've been when you've been in our situation, you hear it all. You know, you hear all the you know platitudes about you're this, you're that, you guys are this, you're that, and you hear the other part too. You know, um, you know the ratings on SMY were through the roof when we were playing lousy, and I asked them why, and they said, "Don't discount how many people tune in to see you lose." <laughs> I said, "You're right." You know, there's just as many people that want to see us lose as want to see us win. And uh, they said, you know, the only time you won championships is when you had the best player. I said, I know, but for about 15 years, I tried to do it with the worst player, and it doesn't work that way. So all the coaches that are going next week to Minneapolis, they all have really, really good players, or we wouldn't be there. Last two. Pat. Pat Eaton, Rob, with the Associated Press. Coach, you've seen w what a horrific injury can do to a team in a game. You've seen it this year. Um, can you talk about this team's resilience and whether going through what they did with Paige and with AZ and with everybody else um, allowed them to respond to Dorka's injury today the way the way they did? They were pretty shook up about it. I didn't. I didn't see it. I, I was. <clears throat> I just know she went down. I didn't see it, but. It was pretty, you know, it was one of those that you've, you've seen it before on TV, and it's not pretty. And they had a chance to see it up close. I didn't, but they did. So they were pretty shook up about it. You could see it in their faces. And, um, and, and I think having been through all the things that we have been through and knowing that we're in the middle of a game right now, um, I think they refocused pretty well, considering. Um, and I felt worse for Dorka because she didn't play great the other night and didn't hardly played at all. And the four or five minutes that she got in there today, she was the biggest factor in the game. You know, she 
she had an impact on every defensive possession, every rebound possession, every offensive possession. So for that to happen at that moment, I just, you know, it's, it's the reason why the kid came here. And I just, it's, but you know, it's another reminder. It's another reminder too. All this is all well and good, you know, but all these shining moments, one shining moment. Yeah, you know, well, one moment that ain't shining and your season's over. That's how fragile all this is, and that's why you got to appreciate it. And you got to enjoy it. I don't, care, I don't care how many of these we win. They're still like the first one. No different. Final question. Lori Riley from the Hartford Current. Um, Gina, what was the actual injury to Dorca? Um, the way it was described to me, I've gotten pretty good at people describing things to me, doctors describing things to me this year. Uh, she was falling down and she went to go catch herself with both hands and when she came down this part of her wrist was completely cleanly fractured and dislocated so the kids saw it and they reacted and Dorka was pretty upset about it um and we'll, we'll, we'll miss her, you know, those of you that cover our team. I told you when when, when watch Dorka practice for a long time, I said she could be the difference that gets us over that hump from last year, you know, where we needed one more, one more big body to, to do some things. And unfortunately, she's not going to get the opportunity to do that. But, um, you know. She'll come back bigger and stronger, okay? You know, hopefully she'll get another opportunity to do this. Well, Coach, congratulations to your team for persevering through so much this year. I know we could probably stay here till well past midnight picking your brain, but we'll let you go celebrate with your team. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks, Coach, everybody. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Don't ask AZ any more questions. <laughs> Got AZ some media training. We'll keep media here. Thank you to our media for all the coverage throughout the weekend. Thank you for your attendance, and please arrive home safely.